this will be a really tiny demo. Uh, probably the, the introduction is more than the demo itself. So um, all those people here who have worked with Orchard 1 uh, know and I presume also love the shape tracing feature. So I saw that we should really have a shape tracing feature in Orchard Core, but I didn't really do that. <laughs> but what I have done is just a really simple feature uh, that we can think further and possibly uh, just add to Orchard as a quick fix and then later elaborate on it. Uh, can you see my, my screen? Oh. Uh, not? Yes, we can. Yeah, you can, all right. So, um, um, this is a small feature in the helpful extensions um, a module of ours called shape tracing, but really the, the name is a bit of an exaggeration. And once you enable it, uh, you will get basically what you already see in the tile hole. It's, it breaks the tile hole a bit in this um, particular theme, in the block theme. But what you get is basically a dump about shapes in the HTML output. So um, if you want to look at where this is coming from, for example, which, which shape um, uh, is behind this particular, particular uh, piece of markup, then, well, you can just open the source and, well, you can check it out. Uh, you see uh, there are these comments included. These are generated when a shape is displayed that give you some, some basic debug data. So you can use these to uh, actually, for example, override the shape. Yeah, so the layout, of course, should comes from the block theme. Hmm? Hmm? Right. Do you want to tear him, or should I? Do you want to tear him, or should I? Tell what? We talked about it recently. I'm not sure I want to say the same thing. <laughs> say what you want to say. You implemented a feature that dumps any object into the JavaScript console. Oh, so this is not the same thing I want to say. So yes, we have a feature. Yeah. Um, that but it's not the same. It's, it's built in. Yeah, so and actually, to... actually, I first wanted to use that, but with the amount oh. of shapes, even on a, on a simple layout, it will cause an out-of-memory exception in .NET. I tried to dig into it, and I couldn't find why, because I don't think the, the amount of data actually warrants it. So, uh, hence why it just dumps this thing there. Okay, so that was the... Um, yeah, that has really been, I, it would be interesting to see how you f f how you got the, the exception. We need to fix it. Um, the thing we talked about recently, however, maybe during a triage, is because when we saw what Dean had done for the debugger um, for the cache, the debug mode for the cache, he was also injecting some kind of format, I think, comments. There was a thing that I didn't know that you could do, and and um, so I'd like to know, I'd like to remember what it is, and maybe you will tell us next time. But then what we talked about is when I saw this syntax that was using in the output, we say maybe we should just have the shape tracing be um, well just it would be nice to have a tab on the right here you see the add guard that you have on the right pane um, it would be nice to have a custom tab here like the same thing as Vue.js also um, so we could um, render stuff that will actually be in integrated in the chrome uh, um, uh, developer tab and that also works for the edge developer tab. And, and that will show the tree or the list of all the shapes and as a tree with the properties if we need or whatever we want as a metadata. So that's good to be able to display it as a comment, but I think it should not be hard to, to go a step further and uh, parse some um, formatted metadata like render in a tab in the Chrome debugger with an extension to display the, the tree of shapes and maybe have all the features later um, that we had in Orchard 1 when you hover every element in the tree with some custom metadata for like what is the, div ele the, the DOM element and so we can um, hover every node in the tree and it will show us where it is in, in the page. So that will be a better integration. So, that, so this is nice, it's a first step to be able to, to render data about the shapes. 
Um, is it clear what I said? Like, can you open? I don't know what is ad guard, but uh, yeah, uh, this is um, um, yeah, an ad blocker. Uh, I think you need um, a Chrome extension for it. Yes, uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And but the Chrome, the Chrome extension, the Chrome extension will then parse the comments that you are generating if they were formatted in a way like JSON. They, if they con if they contain like JSON snippets, they could just oh. I found a JSON snippet. Let's write it in a, as a tree here in this view. So from this view, you can see all the shapes that has been rendered, even uh, without having to browse the HTML directly. Yeah, um, my issue with that would be that it ties this thing to Chrome and uh, Chromium yeah. browsers. Um, yeah. So, so okay, actually, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you don't use Edge or Chrome in this room. Or if you are a web dev that cares about shape tracing and you, fuck you, uh, what are you, <laughs> Internet Explorer or what? <laughs> no, it's true, I want Firefox. Somebody with Firefox here? I use Firefox too. Okay, so if you want to be able to use shape tracing, then you will open the Chrome uh, or Edge, whatever Chromium browser. And uh, but yeah, that I, 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 that would be a, a nice improvement, I think. It's good to have the data in the HTML, but I think that would be a nice improvement to have it uh, as a Chrome tab. And having it as a shape tracer, like in Ultra One, too much work. Inject the HTML, have a custom editor, I don't think it's worth it, so. Yeah, well, uh, of course, this is just a, a tiny first step. And um, I what I really liked on the, on the console logging, uh, the, actually the console log method, that it would pretty much dump uh, all of this data and more uh, right into the into console window here. Uh, so you could also browse it, as you said, uh, without having to do anything with an extension. But I couldn't get it working. For a couple of shapes, it works. If you do it for a full layout for every shape, it would just... Honestly, I think we... We didn't even try to output a shape, maybe. Maybe you just output it like the object and content items. And uh, that's what we did. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not the content of the shape. It's uh, it's pretty much a serialization of the shape object. It's not a rendering, okay. but but still somehow somehow it gets. That's why, that's why I said that maybe we just tried with content and content items and not a shape when we tried the console log. Oh, um, oh. Well, it, it works for one shape and the several so, shapes, but. Not for me. What kind of data do you export here in the HTML? Um, uh, this is this is pretty much hard coded for the for shape metadata. Do everything from shape metadata, but do I have alternates, for instance. Sorry. Do we have alternates? Uh, yes. Uh, this is a pretty simple layout because there there are huge, uh, huge content um, content shapes, but somewhere we should have other shapes here. Ah, I've seen it today. Uh, yeah, but alternates as well. Yeah, here you have for a content yeah. shape. Wrappers too. Yeah, uh, that's it from me.